everybody. Welcome to another Mondays with MMT Facebook Live. Um, my name is Jenny Bond. I am a travel agent with Marvelous Mouse Travels. I have been working with Marvelous Mouse Travels for a year now, and it's been wonderful, and I love it. Um, one of my specialties is Hawaii, and I am a Hawaii destination specialist, so um, I would love to help you plan your trip. And I've been to Hawaii many times, to multiple different islands, with family, um, as a kid. Um, we lived on Hawaii for a while, too. Um, so I have some experience there. But tonight I am here to chat with you about local foods in Hawaii. And um, so we'll get into that a little bit. First, um, what do I mean by Hawaii local foods? If you've been there, you probably know a little bit about that. If you haven't, you may be wondering what does that mean exactly. Um, Hawaii is an amazing destination because it is such um, such a diverse place. There's so many different uh, people who have come from around the world and come together to Hawaii and have brought their foods and their cultures with them. So it's really this mesh of so many different foods. Um, but some of the main ones that you encounter there are, of course, Hawaiian food um, and other Polynesian foods, Japanese, Chinese, Filipino, a lot of Asian foods. Um, of course, you run into a lot of fish and seafood because you're right there on an island the ocean provides, right? And lots of tropical fruits, some you're familiar with and some that you may have never heard of or seen before. Um, so it's an awesome destination for trying new foods, trying new things, and um, hopefully finding new favorites that you love. So we're going to talk a lot about those things. Um, I'll introduce you to some different local foods, uh, tell you about some of my favorite places to get some of them. Um, I'd love for you to share in the comments your favorites um, so that we can all learn from each other. And I will talk a little bit about um, some food experiences that you can have, um, share some pictures, and in the end, I will answer questions and look through the comments. So if you have any questions or comments you'd like to make, please go ahead and make those in the comments, but I won't get to them until the end. <clears throat> so please, again, as, as we're going, go ahead and um, put those in the comments and I'll get to them. So we're gonna start with savory foods. Um, and there's a lot of great savory foods on, on, in Hawaii because um, if you heard some of those different descriptions, you may be familiar already with a lot of different Asian foods and know there's a lot of great savory options there. So um, one, this is an Asian, this is Hawaiian, but the plate lunch. And a plate lunch, definition of a plate lunch is um, meats, you can have one or more meats, one or two scoops of rice, and then one or two scoops of macaroni salad, also called mac salad there. So lots of starches, um, really filling, great takeout food, um, and then a great way to experience several different things. Now, if you aren't really into rice or macaroni salad, you can, some of the places let you choose green salad or other options, but that's kind of standard. Rice, macaroni salad, and meats. And some of those meats that you typically see there, there's usually several options, but um, teriyaki is a big one. So terry beef, terry chicken, um, Kahlua pork, of course, is um, a really big standard for a plate lunch, which is that salty um, pork that has the smoky flavor that is traditionally cooked underground. Um, so those are some options. So plate lunches, um, are really popular. They're easy to find around the islands. Um, there's some great chain restaurants you can look for in addition to local places that you can try. But if, a couple of chains that you'll find throughout the islands, Zippy's and l, &L Hawaiian Barbecue. And l, l can be found here on the mainland in some places too, but there in Hawaii, there's going to be a lot more options on the menu. Like I always, when I go to my local l, &L Hawaiian barbecue, I think, why don't they have, um, why don't they have these other options that I love when I'm in Hawaii? Because there's just so many, so many more options there. And one of my favorites, this um, isn't technically a plate lunch, but uh, one of my favorites is the Kahlua pork 
and cabbage. I just love that so much. It doesn't sound like anything like special or great, but it just hits the spot for me and I just love it. So when I go to l and Hawaiian barbecue um, in Hawaii, that's one of the things I love to get there. Um, so there you go, plate lunch. Um, then we have Simon, which is a noodle bowl. Um, noodles, it's a Chinese, well, there's some debate whether it's Chinese or Japanese, but it's a noodle dish cooked in broth and then frequently um, other things are added to it. So you can have fish cake, um, you can have beef, you can have barbecue pork, um, some greens in there, green onions, um, sometimes some dumplings, um, egg is popular in there too. So a noodle dish, comfort food, um, that's a great option. My, my son loves that too and you can find that a lot of Simon shops around. And again, like Zippy's and, and l and both serve those as well. So easy to find Simon and an easy like run in, grab it to go or eat it in the restaurant option. Okay, this is this is like a hard attack in a bowl, this next one, Loco Moco. And um, it's definitely a comfort food too. And it is for when you have, you know, that appetite for something that's high in fat and carbs and everything. Um, it is rice and then you have a meat patty, usually hamburger, but there's other options as well. And then fried egg and brown gravy over the top. And um, again, this is something that you can find at a lot of cafes and different places. Um, the shop that takes the credit for coming up and creating Locomoco is Cafe 100 on the Big Island. And if you go there, they have lots of different choices for Locomoco. The one I described is kind of the standard original Locomoco, but like I said, they have lots of different options of different meats and different ways that you can have it. Um, but yeah, definitely a comfort food and when you're ready for a lot of calories, a lot of carbs, um, and that brown gravy over everything. So, loco moco. Okay, spam masubi. Now, people know that spam is, um, sorry, I'm just checking something. Okay, uh, people know that spam, that Hawaii is known for spam and their love is spam and some people don't understand it. Um, but spam there is in all sorts of things. And spam masubi, it's similar to if you took Spam and made sushi out of it. So it's on a little um, bed of rice, and then they have a fried piece of Spam on top, and then they wrap it in a little seaweed. And it's kind of a, sometimes it's um, packaged like in plastic wrap to go. Uh, you can find it on menus in various different places, um, but an easy on the go option as well. If you're looking for taking something on a picnic lunch and you wanna try Spam Masubi, it's an easy thing to take and grab and go. Um, so if you're interested in trying that, it actually sound, it tastes better than it sounds. <laughs> um, if you don't like Spam, you may be like, oh my goodness, what is that? But um, but yeah, it's, it's a local favorite. So give Spam a try when you're in Hawaii if you haven't tried it before. It's a great place to try it because they love it there. Okay, Manukua, which I also know as uh, Bo or Bao. Um, it is a Chinese steamed, soft, um, slightly sweet bun with a filling in it. And you may have seen them often, um, even on Kung Fu Panda, like <clears throat> those, those little buns to me look like the Manapua or the Bao Bo, however you say it, um, dumplings that, that you find in Hawaii and Chinese restaurants. Um, so it's a steamed bun that is filled with usually a meat mixture, but sometimes other things. My favorite one is barbecue pork. I think it is delicious. And sometimes you can find them in the freezer section. Um, in Hawaii, you can definitely find them in the freezer section. Once in a while, I run into them in the freezer section in my Costco, and I get excited because I love those. And you can just microwave it from frozen and eat it, and they're delicious. But yeah, slightly sweet, very soft, with you know a savory filling usually. So that's another option that you might want to try. Um, fish. So fish is not unique to Hawaii, right? We can find fish all over the place. 
But in Hawaii, the fish is so prevalent and so easy and so fresh because it's an island. So you can easily get all kinds of fish. My, um, my uncle lived on Hawaii and he and his boys would go out and go spearfishing all the time and bring home fish, fresh fish. So that's not that unusual there. So fresh fish, there's so many kinds, so many varieties, many that you may be familiar, familiar with and some that may be different. Now one, if you go to Hawaii, I want you to watch out for uh, ono on the menu. And it's a kind of fish, but it's also a word in Hawaii, Hawaiian that means delicious or best. And so that tells you a little bit about this fish. If they name this fish ono or delicious best fish, then you can expect that it will be a good fish. It's a very delicious fish. They use it in various different kinds of um, dishes from just a plain fish to like in tacos or wraps, various different things. And so watch for that, watch for Ono on the menu and give it a try if you like seafood at all. Um, usually it won't be very fishy. So if you're somebody who likes fish but, does, but wants to stay away from that fishy flavor, Ono is a really good option to try. Um, shrimp. Okay, on Oahu's North Shore, they are known for their shrimp trucks and shrimp um, stands. And it's almost like a battle for whose shrimp truck and whose shrimp stand is gonna win your business because there's lots of choices. And um, we've tried several so far. Um, my favorite is Fumi's. And Fumi's and at least one other one um, have their own um, shrimp farms right next to their stands. And so they grow their shrimp is that what you say? They grow their shrimp, I guess, um, right there next to their stand. It's really fresh. And then they cook it up right there in the stand. And you have several choices for how it can be prepared uh, with different sauces and usually with rice or a salad on the side. And um, it's just delicious. They do a lot of spicy options too in a lot of the shrimp trucks. Um, some of them are really messy. Um, some of them don't have tables to sit at. Um, but they're really fun and if you get a chance to go it's a great option if you like shrimp um, my favorite time to do it is if I'm going up to the Polynesian Cultural Center I like to do uh, a shrimp lunch at one of the stands or the trucks right before I go to the Polynesian Cultural Center because the Polynesian Cultural Center opens a little bit later so go and get lunch at a shrimp truck and then go to the Polynesian Cultural Center and it's great. I just love it. And I know there's more shrimp trucks popping up that I haven't been to. And I can't wait to get to those and see which one is, if, if I still have this one as my favorite or if I have a new favorite. Have you guys been there? Have you tried any of the fish trucks? And what do you think? I want to hear. So put it in the comments. Again, I'm going to be looking through the comments and the questions at the end. So uh, don't feel ignored if I'm not um, reading your comment or question. I'm going to get to it at the end. So just stay with me, okay? All right, another one, poke. So poke is um, a raw fish that's marinated. Um, so if you're familiar with ceviche for shrimp, similar to that, but totally different at the same time. So a lot of time they use ahi or other fishes in uh, poke. And there's places that are just poke uh, shacks too. That's, that's like their main thing that they serve. Um, but it is marinated with salts and sauces, uh, frequently with, um, you know, a little soy sauce, uh, maybe a little uh, sesame oil, green onion, sesame seeds, um, things like that. But really there's all different flavors and sauces that they can put in there and marinate it with. Now, if you're afraid of um, raw fish. You may not want to try it, but if you're open to new things, give it a shot. It's delicious. Um, I prefer the ones with the se sesame oil. Um, I just like that flavor with the fish, and then usually there's a little seaweed in there too, and I just think it's delicious. Um, another, That's another great option that's good to go for a picnic or something that you can go and you can get some and, and just take it to go. Okay, we're getting to sweet now, and um, I did it in order, right? The savory and then the sweet. So your desserts or your treats, or if you just like to skip the savory and go straight to the sweet, 
this is for you. Uh, malasadas. Um, I have a soft spot in my heart for malasadas. Um, I grew up going to Leonard's Bakery and loving to get malasadas from there. Leonard's Bakery has been around for many, many decades, and um, it is the place to go, in my opinion, on Oahu for malasadas. Malasadas are a Portuguese donut. It is a fried dough that then is coated in cinnamon and sugar. And sometimes they're plain with no filling. Sometimes they have a filling, a fruit filling, chocolate, custard, various choices. Um, at Leonard's Bakery, they uh, do a great malasada. And it's this isn't the best description, but it has almost that little, um, like almost a little crispness to the outer part. And then it's super soft on the inside. Um, and it's coated in that cinnamon sugar, and I just think it's perfection. If you want a plain malasada, I think Leonard's is the place to go. They have fillings and stuff too, but plain at Leonard's is my favorite. Um, two other places that I love malasadas, um, and they all have different ones. So again, these are all good and delicious in their own ways. So another favorite that I have on the Big Island is Punalu'u Bake Shop, and my favorite there is the Lily Koi Malasada. Is just delicious it has a glaze over it so um, it's really good um, one other one one other place that I really like is Texas drive-in and they serve other things besides malasadas but the malasadas are like their signature item and you can even go there and watch in the window as they're making their mal malasadas which is a fun experience especially with kids their malasadas are really big and fluffy and light um, and then there, I really like the filled ones, like the chocolate or the halpia filled one, which is coconut, uh, like a coconut cream or pudding on the inside. I really like those, but they're really big. So um, one is enough for me or even enough to share. Um, but definitely, if you're on the Big Island, go try both of those. They're in totally different places. Punalu'u Bake Shop is down in the south and Texas is up in the north. So you have malasada shops no matter where you go. It's great. Okay, shave ice. I think everybody pretty much knows about shave ice. It is the superior um, option of um, a snow cone. So I don't like snow cones, but I love shave ice because it's soft, it's like snow, it's wonderful, fine shaved snow. And then they put, um, your choice of syrups on there. You can have one syrup, two, three. I don't know if I go more, for more than three because they get kind of mixed together. But you can also choose various toppings. Um, you can get ice cream in the bottom, which is my favorite thing to do. Also condensed milk over the top is delicious. But they also have other options of add-ons that you can do to customize your own um, shave ice. Now one place that is kind of an iconic place for shave ice is Matsumoto's on Oahu on the North Shore and we've been there and it is delicious and amazing and it usually has a long line out the door but they know how to do their thing like they've got it down and they can just go through the line pretty quickly and they've just got their system down so don't be afraid if you go there and you want to get shave ice and the, they have a long line it will usually go pretty fast so I definitely definitely recommend stopping there um, any other shave ice places, like really like there's so many good ones. So, um, go get a shave ice on Hawaii and get some ice cream or condensed milk, uh, added to it. Cause it's just fantastic. Okay. Hapia. Hapia is a coconut pudding, but usually like if you're, if you have hapia just by itself, it's usually got a firmer texture, um, more similar to like a jello, maybe like a finger jello, but not quite but it is a coconut pudding. And you can usually find it at Luau's, um, other places too. You can make it at home really easily if you like Hapia and you want to try that. It's not hard. Uh, there's recipes online. You can even buy um, Hapia mixes when you're in Hawaii um, and mix up. You can even sometimes find it in the grocery store here on the mainland. So um, if you want to try Hapia before you go to Hawaii or when you're at home, like you can do that. It's great. And so it's that coconut creamy flavor. You can also find it um, in cakes 
or like I said, the malasada sometimes have a halpia um, filling. Um, there's lots of different options for halpia. All right, uh, macadamia nut pie. This is one that I love. It is similar to pecan pie, like in the idea of it, but I think it's so much better than pecan pie. Um, it's just so delicious and it's got that buttery, nutty flavor. Um, you can find out lots of different places. One of my favorites is Kona Inn on the Big Island and um, they serve it a little bit warm with a scoop of vanilla ice cream and I just love it. It's just, I wish I had a piece right now. It's so delicious. Um, Kona Inn also, like I said, on the Big Island in Kona, um, fantastic place to eat. It is right along the water's edge. It's um, a little bit pricey as most places in Hawaii are, but not like over the top pricey. They've got great fish options, um, great fish and chips, um, lots of different delicious foods. But my favorite thing is that they're right along the ocean front. And you can sit there at the restaurant and it's um, open and outdoors and then, but covered. So if it rains or whatever, you're okay. Oh, some of the seats are. Um, but then there's a grassy strip and then there's the wall and the ocean and a little bit of sand right there. And it is just a fantastic place to have dinner and watch the sunset. We've done it a couple times. Great for kids because the kids can run on the grass while you're waiting for dinner or if you take longer to eat than they do. I know my kids have been like that a lot. You can have them run out on the grass. It's not a problem and you can just enjoy the sunset from right there while you eat your food and then of course order the, the macadamia nut pie. Okay, we're gonna move on to experiences. Um, one is farm tours. Um, you can find various farm tours if you really like food, like I do. <laughs> um, you can find various farm tour experiences on various islands. Um, some that I've done, macadamia nut, um, they have those a lot on the Big Island. So you could do um, the Mauna Loa one, which is really popular. Um, they have the Hamakua nut farm, and some others. I can't remember all the names of them, but there are several macadamia nut farm tours that are fun. And then you can sample nuts. They have little stores. Um, you can see how hard it is to crack a, a macadamia nut. Those things are really hard. Those shells are really hard. Um, if you like coffee, there's coffee tours, of course, Kona. The Big Island is known for its coffee. Um, so you can do coffee tours, uh, pineapple tours, of course. The Dole Plantation is a really popular one on Oahu. Uh, so you can do the Dole Plantation and, of course, get Dole Whip, right? One of the places that you can get Dole Whip outside of Disney parks. Um, they even have tropical garden tours that sometimes have um, foods at them um, and sometimes have a little food stand somewhere during the tour where you can sample some different uh, tropical fruits that you may not be familiar with or you can buy um, different um, you know foods that you may want to eat. Um, so that's another good thing. I know I've been to a couple of those and it's been really interesting to sample foods and fruits that you're not familiar with and just see what they're like. Um, if you're somebody that's open and likes to try new things, that's a great thing to do. Okay, uh, luau. Of course, this is the one that everybody knows and everybody wants to do a the luau if they go to Hawaii, and I think you should. I definitely think it is um, an experience that everybody should try if they're going to Hawaii, and I like to try multiple luau's. I've been to them before. Um, I've been to some family ones that are more, you know, with local families. Um, I highly recommend trying a luau. And what to look for when you're looking for a luau to um, ex experience, because there's lots of different choices. I look at the menu. I want to find a luau that has a large assortment of options on the menu. Um, so ones that I always look for, um, wait, I'll get to are <laughs> Kahlua pork, of course. If there's not Kahlua pork on the menu, go somewhere else because that's like the main part of the food. Like they cook the pig in a pit. And if they don't have Kahlua pork, then in my opinion, it's not luau. So Kahlua pork, chicken long rice, which is um, a comfort food that's like a, 
um, thin, um, clear noodle cooked in like chicken broth and things like that. Um, so a chicken, chicken soup type flavored noodle. Um, I love that. Lomi Lomi salmon, which is um, a raw salmon again. Um, let's see, Lao Lao, which is pork cooked in taro leaves. Um, poi, of course, everybody's got to try poi. I don't love poi, to be honest. Um, some people do, but you got to try poi. Uh, Halpia. Anyways, you want to look for some of those things on the menu and uh, a diverse number of foods is great. You also want to look for um, a place that has maybe some pre-dinner activities, especially if you're a family and you have kids that are going to be around, you may want to look for that. Um, consider what the setting is. Some have lovely settings right along the ocean. Other, others may be um, indoors or more inland. Still, they may be wonderful luau's, but just consider all those things and when you're deciding what kind of luau you want to, to try. So my personal favorites that I've been to um, on Oahu, my favorite is the Chief's Luau. And that one um, is, there's a lot of people, but it has a very family atmosphere and environment. Uh, lots of activities before dinner, lots of kids, um, and they get the kids involved with lots of different fun activities and uh, kind of standard luau food. And the show um, is up at the front, of course, um, and they do a lot of uh, traditional luau, traditional um, Polynesian dancing, of course, the fire dancing. They sometimes invite kids up on the stage to teach them a little luau and have them perform a little bit. Um, so it's pretty traditional and um, a great choice on Oahu. On the Big Island, my favorite is the Mauna Kea Luau, which is at the Mauna Kea Beach Hotel. And that's on the, um, like in the Kohala area. So the North uh, Western um, shoreline. And that Luau, I was really impressed by the amount and variety of foods. There were so many different foods, many I hadn't ever heard of, and just a huge variety. And I just love that about that one. Also, the show um, went, it kind of started with a lot of traditional dancing and stories and then kind of progressed into really modern and like a little bit glitzy Las Vegas um, hula, you know, in some respects. So there was a great variety and kind of a story that wove through the whole thing. There weren't as many pre-dinner activities um, and it was a little bit smaller. It wasn't small, but it was smaller than the Chief Luau, but... Um, the setting was gorgeous right on like the cliffside um, overlooking the ocean and a beautiful sunset in the background of the show. So I just I highly recommend that one if you're um, on the Big Island. Okay, roadside food stands. Now these you can find throughout the islands while you're just driving around you can run into a lot of food stands a lot with um, tropical fresh fruits, baked goods, things like that. I think they're great. Um, I love stopping and, and supporting those small businesses and enjoying whatever they have at their stand. Um, one of my favorites is the South Kona fruit stand, which is on the Big Island. And they have fa fantastic fresh fruits, guacamole, um, some baked goods that I love. Um, that's one that I love. So, um, oh, on, on, um, on Maui, the road to Hana has a ton of fruit stands too. A lot that have banana bread, a lot that have fresh fruits. So if you want to stop while you're on that road, there's a lot of options for, for roadside fruit stands and food stands. So, so that's great. Okay, one other one I want to hit on, one other experience is farmer's markets. There are lots of farmer's markets throughout all the, all the islands. And if you prepare and you look a little bit ahead of time, you can kind of plan for that or you're resort or hotel that you're staying at may have information about the farmers markets. Um, again, a great place to go for fresh uh, produce, um, avocados like the size of your head, and, um, and also like small batch food items locally prepared. So if you're looking for a special like jam to take home or um, some 
you know, some small batch item that you want to sample that's locally made, like that's a great place to go. You can also find all sorts of non-food items there too. It's just a fun place to go and you can interact with local people and get to know them and ask their, ask their opinions and, um, and just enjoy that something that local people do and that you can participate in too easily. Okay, um, wanted to share a few other favorites and then we'll go to the questions and comments. So my friend Brenda commented that she loved Mermaid's Cafe on Kauai and I've heard that they have great ahi wraps and fish tacos. So um, there you go, there's a tip from Brenda. She also said uh, she loves he hats on Kauai for shave ice. So that's great if you're going to Kauai. Write those down. Make a note of those to try. Oh, and I cannot leave without mentioning one of my favorite places on the Big Island um, for smoothies is What's Shaken. And I seriously crave their smoothies. I could go there multiple times in one trip and not be satisfied. Uh, their smoothies are just amazing. They are right on a farm, their own farm. And so they grow their own produce that they use in their smoothies. So you can't get fresher than that. And you can go and observe the farm and check it out, and it's really fun. They also have amazing guacamole, so that's another one I recommend. And they serve um, cold coconuts, cold coconut water. So that's another fun one when you're in Hawaii to get one of the coconuts at one of the farm stands and they'll just you know cut the top off or drill drill holes in and put a straw in there and just drinking that fresh like cold coconut water is a great experience and super fun um they're a little pricey for a coconut but it's about the experience too right okay all right okay we're gonna go to comments here oh actually let's do i forgot to share these pictures so this one is um, this one's the chief luau on Oahu. And you can see that's the pig right there, not completely in a pig shape anymore, but um, but they just kind of unburied it. And it's really fun at the luau's to be able to see that and experience that. Okay, this is a farmer's market and look at those avocados. There's multiple varieties and they are just amazing with different flavors, um, just wonderful. Okay, this is some food from the Mauna Kea Luau. As you can see, I could not get enough. I wanted to try everything. So many choices. I wish I could point them all out to you and tell you what they are. But um, again, a great way to experience lots of different foods and um, see what you like. Okay, our hotel, Mauna Kea, served this uh, when we arrived. Um, that fruit is papaya, if you're not familiar with it, with a lime. Such a great way to start your morning with um, ripe papaya with a little lime on it. So delicious. And that was some banana bread. Okay, this is my husband drinking coconut water from a coconut right there at uh, What's Shaken. This is part of their farm. It doesn't show any of the uh, actual things growing, but beautiful area. And then another luau, this one's the Mauna Kea luau. They also did, um, they did the pig and they also did turkey right there for people that didn't want uh, the pig. They had smoked turkey in there, which was amazing too. Okay, breakfast. These, this picture is, uh, should have been edited, but uh, macadamia nut banana pancakes, so delicious. Breakfast options there are just as amazing as dinner. This was from Kona Inn. This is a fish dish. It was really delicious. And then some mashed potatoes and just the presentation is just gorgeous. So you get gorgeous food in a gorgeous setting right by the ocean. Drinks. Now I don't drink alcohol, but I like to get all the virgin drinks. And my favorite one is this, the Lava Flow. Oh, it is so delicious. If you're going to Hawaii, get a Lava Flow. Malasadas. So these are a few different ones with different fillings, as you can see, but it gives you an idea. It's um, just a round ball of fried dough that may have a filling in it and then coated in that sugar and cinnamon. Then we're back to the Chief's Luau. Okay, so there we go. Let me check out your uh, comments and questions. Let's see. Oh, so glad you guys joined me. This is so fun. So Ashley, you love the Poke, malasadas, garlic, shrimp, and shave ice. Oh my gosh. 
I am with you, girl. I love, like, I could go for any of those right now. I haven't had dinner yet, and they all sound so good. Okay, give me poke for my appetizer, then some garlic shrimp for my dinner, malasadas and shave ice for dessert. Like, fantastic. Brittany, sounding great. Thank you. Megan, you're starving? Oh, me too. Like, I need to eat dinner. Um, we're having chicken tacos tonight, and that doesn't sound nearly as good as all these things. <laughs> Uh, Lao Lao, Masubi, and Loco Moco are your favorite. Awesome. Those are some good choices. Some people, you know, steer away from the Lao Lao with the tara leaves around it, but it's so great to try that. Um, yum. Okay, Nikki. Oh, thank you. Jenny is the best. Oh, you're so sweet. Thank you so much. You guys are so great. I am so excited that I got to spend tonight with you. Um, I just wanted to let you know that I would love to help you with your Hawaii trip if you're thinking about going. Um, I offer lots of lots more dining choices, dining recommendations to my clients with their travel packets to Hawaii. I send a whole bunch of recommendations, little descriptions of some of my, my recommendations and my favorites to help them decide and help them have great dining experiences while they're on the islands. Um, and so I'd love to do that for you if you're thinking about a Hawaii trip please contact me down here. Some of my information, my Facebook page. I'd love for you to follow me. Instagram. I love Instagram and my email. And again, you can also, um, if you're ready to book a trip, like use my quote form. It is tinyurl.com forward slash Jenny MMT vacation for your Hawaii trips. And if you have other destinations you're interested in, I'd love to help you with those as well. And it's been my pleasure having you here. I hope you have a lovely night, and I hope to see you again at one of these Facebook Lives. Good night.